Every time I've mentored someone in tech to help kickstart their career in software engineering, the first thing I usually ask is, what does your resume look like? And I think this is the logical first step as it is your first impression to a company. And it's as the saying goes, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And for better or for worse, those first impressions tend to stick. Now I myself have written some pretty bad resumes and I've spent more hours than I'd like to admit on refining them. And I will be revealing my resume that landed me my software engineering role at Amazon and I'm not going to lie to you, I'm kind of cringing at it. But I think that's a sign that I've grown and have gotten better. And I thought this would be a poignant message to share for those starting out in their careers. I also want to make something clear. These are my opinions. And though I'm not a resume expert, I've been pretty successful at landing interviews at Fortune 500 companies with my resume. So I do think I have some kind of a leg to stand on in this topic. But if you disagree, I'd love to hear why in the comment section. I'm always open to learning and improving and having a discussion. Before I get started, I wanted to talk briefly about what exactly makes me qualified to speak on this topic. I've been a software development engineer too at Amazon for almost five years. And during that time, I've had the pleasure in participating in multiple interview loops, including going through one myself, of course. And I think that grants me enough experience to speak generally on this topic and to provide general guidance on how to best structure a resume. So let's take a step back and evaluate the landscape of applying for an engineering role. Now I'm going to be referencing the process at Amazon since that's the process that I know best, but I'm assuming other companies are structured similarly. When you submit a resume, it usually doesn't go directly to the tech team. It is often read by recruiters, town acquisition, student programs, or some other department of the like. And then it gets forwarded to the tech team once you make it past the initial barrier. So the initial barrier of entry is actually a non-technical personnel. And they read hundreds, if not thousands, of these resumes, often in 7 to 10 seconds. So you don't have much time to work with. So it's important that you can communicate your skills, your experience, as concisely and as quickly as possible in that time window to people that generally don't have a super, super in-depth knowledge about the technical world. So now that we understand the landscape a little bit better, here are three tips that I have on how to write a good resume. And I use these tips myself to get my role in Amazon and to apply to other places in which I was able to land interviews as well. One. Keep it simple. Two, make it look nice. And three, get a lot of feedback. Before we get to my resume tips, I wanted to first thank the sponsor of this video, Beam Jobs. Now this is kind of a call for celebration because this is the first company that has sponsored a video on this channel. Um, so thank you, Beam Jobs. I really appreciate it. But I wanted to also be clear. I don't particularly want to work with brands unless I genuinely believe in them and uh, find value in them. And after doing my deep dive on this service, I have concluded that, yeah, this is a top-notch tool that I have used and I would recommend people use. So if you don't know what Beam Jobs is, it's a service that allows you to build a resume or cover letter and you can choose from a variety of templates from a variety of careers. I'm assuming you're interested in the software engineering one because you're watching this, but it doesn't have to be that, it could be any other career. Just today, over 7,000 resumes have been built and nearly 2 million have been built in the last couple of years using this service. And the people that have used this service have gone on to join Google, Lyft, Facebook, companies of the like. Now my favorite tool on Beam Jobs is actually the tool where you can upload a resume that you've built and it'll actually use AI to give you feedback on your resume, which is kind of a foreshadowing on one of my tips. So I got a score of 83, so it looks like there's uh, some things I gotta do to improve my resume. There is an improvement section where they break down exactly what you can do better. This is a really cool tool. I highly encourage you to check it out. I wish I knew about this when I was applying for jobs. I'll definitely be using this when I do apply for jobs. And yeah, thank you, Beam Jobs. Now back to the video. Keep it simple. There's a good chance that a large portion of your audience isn't going to be super technically savvy. 
So don't assume that they're going to know all the tech jargon or acronyms and try to make yourself sound smart with big convoluted words. Keep it simple, concise, use common English where you can. A core tenant in being a good engineer is taking a complex domain and redacting it down into simple, smaller components. And I view writing a resume in the same way. You likely are a super complicated person with a lot of experience, a lot of skills, and a lot of talent and accolades under your belt. And it's up to you to take that monolithic identity and redact it down to something easy to read and digestible in a single sheet of paper. Now that might sound like a really daunting task to do, but with enough iterations, I promise you, you'll be able to communicate that thoroughly through a resume. Make your resumes look nice. Now there's a concept called framing, and it's the art of presenting information in a way that is engaging and aesthetically pleasing. And your resume is effectively your strategy to frame your competence to whoever's reading it that's representing the company you're applying for and to deduce whether or not you are fit for a role. Now these people are reading a ton of resumes. So if your resume looks like this, it's not exactly compelling for someone to read, especially if they've been looking at hundreds and thousands of these. So play around with the formatting, play around with the white space, play around with different colors and accents. And maybe in doing so, you might create a resume that will pop and will be eye-catching and will be compelling for someone to read and spend more time than seven to 10 seconds on your resume. And the longer someone looks at your resume, the more information they can gather on whether or not you're fit for a role. Just something to think about. And for my last advice, get feedback. Treat your resume like a piece of writing. And in that line of thinking, if you think about authors and poets, they oftentimes didn't write their famous books or poems on the first try. They likely edited revised, removed sections, added sections, y you get my point. And your resume shouldn't be any different. Try out different formatting, try out different tones, try different wording, reword that makes things clear, and iterate. And as you iterate, show them to people. I think it's a good thing to share your resume with other people and get feedback, especially someone that is in the industry that you're looking to get into. And they can give you feedback on what's important. They can fill you in on the gaps that are missing on your resume. And they can help you remove sections that are irrelevant. So those are my three tips. I hope you enjoyed or learned something. And I hope that you land whatever role that you apply for. Thank you.